Uh, in a way, this is going to um, be about some... It's going to change the flow a little bit from the series that we're currently on. But yet, it's going to be about the series that we're on. <sighs> but we're not going to continue that same... Um, pace that we were currently in. We're going to change pace. We're going to change gears a little bit and uh, talk about some other things that are completely all a part of the same thing. But uh, it's something I've been meaning to talk about for a while concerns the dance and uh, a very unique thing concerning these dance as it concerns something that Jesus said in the book of Luke about uh, their kingdom being divided and then how how many levels that really manifests itself from the lowest and then to the highest of them and then uh, how these manifestations are going to actually really manifest into reality and from one perspective will be the identity of the Dan's that judge them Jesus Christ gives a comparison with Beelzebub and knowing who Beelzebub is Beelzebub is a midwear and quite possibly the only way that you would understand that Beelzebub is a midwear is as if you would have read the Urantia book that's the only place that I know of <clears throat> that reveals the identity of Beelzebub as a midware. Very important. Um, what you're looking at here, in my opinion, is Inky. This is not Beelzebub. Um, with Ishtar, the dude that looks like a lady, right before it. And then the lion feet are going to be synonymous with the same identity of the individual here. Notice that it's bird feet, but the lion are under it. That's the conveyance that further fulfills the scripture of Ezekiel chapter 19. Moreover, take thou up a lamentation. This is a lamentation for the princes of Israel, for these people here, right, that are involved in this this synthesis and separation of identities, this mask they wear, and say, what is thy mother, a lioness? And there's the depiction. Uh, even fuller interpretation of the identity here, which you see through the conquering of these lions. And then we see the connection of the identity here of who is to be brought about from that? As I said, establishing the sacred feminine and then to create that kingly line. Okay. And then, of course, this kingly line has this heritage, uh, this descendancy in which it's prideful over its supposed divine origin, which is really from these fallen, uh, that it lost their way. Um, in multiple manifestations, mind you, you know, not just any one way from a spiritual even being to the material beings that followed after and then the ramifications as the translations would try to describe the events that happened simultaneously between those two perspectives of real realities and then the manifestations that have come about it. So I'm just kind of relaying why the picture is here, right here. This is Inky. Notice the serpents that you see on either side, all right? And then you can see the identity that is being hidden behind. Now, when you get back to Jack, um, the fullness of Jack, as the uh, reflection goes to the highest, always to the root, the root of this confusion, of course, the spiritual rebellion, the instigators of such. And here we see. The real objective was to create the sacred feminine, to, uh, in a sense, foster that as being sacred, but really hiding behind that identity is the dude uh, that they want to appear as the lady. And then there's Inky right there. This should be, 
in Washington, D.C., if I'm not mistaken. It should be a massive statue. Now, if you think I'm joking around, let's take a look under here at the hieroglyph that they have chosen to convey. And we'll get back to what I was talking about, about the dance and some other stuff, and all kinds of stuff. Okay, I could just, I don't know where this is really going to go. Um, notice the zigzag lines. Remember I told you guys that that stands for the movement of the moon, that it's going to interrelate itself to the moon. And in a sense, it also relates itself to chaotic waters and chaotic sea, which I told you translates from chaos and then those unruly chaotic people which become a manifestation of the Dan's as we've seen in history. But remember, we're going to talk about the Dan's, or maybe I haven't said it yet in this video, under the perspective of the Midwares. And you're going to see how this really begins to turn out. So unfortunate for those that doubt my words and think they know who the identity of the Dan's is in this judgment time that Jesus predicted in Luke. And it's going to hinge on the midwear and the identity of Beelzebub. And we'll just get to that. But I just wanted to clear up something because this was a part of what we were talking about. Notice the zigzag lines. Notice once again the zigzag lines. Notice it also makes the Masonic square and compass, which geometrically we've already shown in a three-dimensional image of a cube that has been catty-cornered, if you will, uh, will show you that same internal geometry with the four square line application of the 2D image of that square. And you've seen it on paper. It's just basically saying how it was shown on paper. So interestingly enough, just dealing with the zigzag lines alone, as above, so too below, separation symbols between the two, um, we've got a correlation. And it's the same correlation that I've been telling you guys. You can even see it in the foundation here, uh, but the zigzag lines are more curved in a sense, but you could also see this in the presence of water. But remember, it's chaotic and unruly, and then you would have to remember um, what we've talked about with certain peoples uh, being taken up to this place and then of course destruction taking place at this place and then peoples being brought down and then the confusion of the identities and the roles between these peoples and then the confusion we're going to talk about further from their doctrine is this perspective of them bringing this double-sided split thing together but yet at the very same time it's being divided they're rejecting, they're smiting something, they're destroying something, they're getting rid of something. You know what I mean? It's weird. Um, I might end up talking about that animation thing, the Guardians of Gahul, or the Guardians of the G-Hole, as I would see it, and about this curious thing with the Guardians in these metal flecks, and then this arcing electricity colored blue that ends up holding these uh, ends up holding these supposed guardians down at a location they go to to free somebody supposedly and how this will all identify with the moon and how they're trying to free somebody from that bound and that bond there that supposedly is good and it's gone there only to do the good but then got trapped there themselves you see how this is going to fit to what I told you about uh, this Orion but you see it's the metal that's there itself that is bound. But they're trying to switch it to where the metal is the thing that's binding them. But that's in reflection of the chains itself. And then that would be the chains of iron that even bind those still that follow after uh, these ball and chains of iron Orion. It's really, it's really becoming quite clear in my mind. Uh, what they're trying to do and what they're trying to do to the majority of their own and how many levels it's playing out and how many people are being duped into this perspective. Even think about who is it, JC and Beyonce's name their child Blue Ivy. I mean, it's incredible. Even when we go to Ezekiel, um, notice the blue, everybody's switching from the red and then the blue now becomes the thing that is about to be hit and destroyed. But that's those that they have induced and told that you're duping someone else what in reality they're duping them with the thing that they're getting them to do to the other people and it it, it interfractivates in so
it interfractivates in so many perspectives. You know, quoting here once again, chapter 19, once again, more, more or less talking about that, that mother, that lioness, who you see being depicted here in this image, okay? But then the real reality of this conquering lion becomes inky because in the reference of the sons of God, all right? Not that he himself is that type of son of God that took the flesh, that we know that he's the part of leading them into that uh, plot or that propaganda. But of course, the plot of the propaganda is to bring him into the material form, which you see this is that perspective now, that hooded one that you see so many would portray themselves as that supposed Jedi, or should I say Jin eye, if you will. But this would have to be the perspective of Inky coming through the tabernacle of the flesh, the sacred feminine, through the foundation of the corruption of the ancient sons of God. And there we go back to the chaotic waters and then the as above, so to below. This would have to be the moon location. And then this would have to be in reference now to Inky being Lord of the flowing waters. Uh, but we see that the waters that are flowing, they're only flowing in this chaotic fashion. And then I'd like to remind you that Jesus Christ himself is seen and narrated as calming these waters. And that's that truth. That's that gospel. If you understand it, if you can grasp it like a, a simple child that is trusting in a loving, true parent, you know? So there's a lot, uh, I think, that's going to intercorrelate here um, in so many ways, but I think the perspective that I'm trying to get you guys to see is the, the multi-level paradox of this. You know, we're, we're talking about the house of Israel. As Jesus Christ says, go into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, the lost sheep of the house of Israel is a house of mirrors. Ephraim is the leaven, the eleven. We know that this eleven is representing itself as a uh, uh, double and then by default, a reversal of itself and then a rejection of its original self. And then, then now having this astral projection of its own mind from one hemisphere of the brain into the entirety of the opposite hemisphere of the brain, only operating from the material perspective in which you can only now perceive material realities and which then seeks to exist within those material realities, uh, existentially, uh, experientially eternally within the material form of this construct of carbon the value of the shadow of death which is not a good place to be you know what I mean um, more or less this valley of the shadow of death is the result of an impression that was made and the impression itself is the mark and then the mark is the violence that then becomes the mold in which these people now by default of the contour project themselves into and become these willing marked beasts only of material lusts and uh, ideologies and, and, and see them as these delectable spiritual fruits of which they're really not. You know, they're a part of the material way, which is a way through experiential learning of what right and wrong is. And they're living with the repercussions of that effect. Uh, but they are not the objective. You know, they're not the goal. Uh, they're just consequential in their being. Therefore, you don't uh, make them the, uh, the objective itself. Uh, it's just a part of the mechanistic early beginning way uh, that you traverse space-time in its density rather than trying to uh, um, grab onto its weightiness, its chain, its material bondage and drag you down to the bottom of that sea, you know? So, uh, in talking about the dance, now this will come back up, this picture here is going to come back up with the Yankee discussion. Um, and it should come back up with the Midware discussion, how this is going to link up their kingdom divided, and how they're, they're, they're trying to smite somebody, right? And then if what they're smiting is that other singular eye, think about how they're getting their... Um, they're duping the entertainment industry into flashing the left eye symbolism with the right eye uh, that's been 
uh, damaged. Now, if you were to watch the Guardians of Gahu, you'll see that they show two Al factions. This is the Divergency. This is the synthesis of that Divergency, where they're not letting people see the fullness that it's one and the same identity that they're only fracturing uh, to account for the double, the double vision of which they have, and then to account for the propaganda to bring these two things together, of which they're already working from the same two sides of what that thing is already, only making you think that it's separate. But then in reality, still seeking to destroy one portion of it. Well, that's the division. That's the divide and conquer. But the division is taking place within itself. And then the symbolism between the singular eyes will show you that. So my point is, the validity is, is that through this destruction of one portion of this thing, still, still admits in their own doctrine that they're seeking to still divide something rather than bring that the same thing together. But then within the initiatic viewpoint, they teach that they're bringing it together and that they have to destroy something to free something. But then the thing that they're destroying becomes the very lower initiates in perspective that they have duped into this chaos to commit this atrocity against the masses. It's incredible. And that's probably somebody trying to divert the uh, videos. They know when I do videos, of course, they're, they're all around me, but they're supposed to be here. I've come to them, and therefore, by default, they're understanding the fullness of what's going to take place, as best as I'm able to give it. Uh, give me one second. Okay, let's uh, let's get this thing going here. Um. I drew this picture, I think, maybe even on the dot about 23 years ago now. I don't know. It's somewhere close around there, okay? Before I knew what was going on, I just drew it. Like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. To me, I had always been interested in this kind of stuff, and I had already read Behold a Pale Horse um, by then. Um, I had already even begun the vow of a Nazarite, at least my interpretation thereof, uh, and fulfilled it for seven years. And how it's weird. I'm just trying to tell you guys how I have already um, been prepared for this, and it's happened, and this is the culmination of it. And I'm just showing it from my perspective. You don't have to. If you're here, you want to know. And these are probably some of the things that you'd like to know, at least from my perspective, how I see it. I'm going to do my best to do it and talk about some things with these dance and how people are, uh, uh, they're, I got some lack of some information here. I'm going to throw you some new variables that you might need to weigh in here. Because they're playing the dance, as I said, right? They think there ain't no nobody coming after them. Well, they don't understand the true interpretation of Joel 2 as it's coming from the perspective of Jesus Christ in the book of Luke. As he's telling who's going to judge them in the last days, of which the strong is all about. Um, I want to show you something here. Uh... I've already tried to do this video a couple of times, so I, I don't know if we've already talked about this, but notice the moon here. Very peculiar. That's Sin, Babylonian moon god. He's even depicted in ancient times as have, having four horns. There's four horns right there. It's incredible. And then you could even call this um, like the little horn, if you will. And then notice that there's a tree on there. Notice that there's, there's a destruction. It's in, it's in representation of these roots here that are being burned by its own fire, if you will. Even its own god, right? And this would fulfill the description of the scripture and the prophecy from the book of Hosea and even Amos. And of course, all throughout the New Testament, Ezekiel and even Isaiah, Jeremiah as well. We have a, a, a bomb that's coming out of the moon, but a cup is dropping down here at Gotham City. A destruction takes place in New York City. But then we see the perspective takes place multiple levels and destructions other places. And that's due to this fracture. Uh, and this multi-level manifestation uh, that, in a sense, is a repercussion of multi-level misinterpretations of these people crouching and crutching canes leaning upon their own understanding. And uh, here we have the destruction taking place at the moon location. And, of course, a rocket coming from the moon location, destroying another situation out here in space. Incredible. Notice it says USA. All right, United States of America, full of race. Uh-oh, notice it has a goat head on it.
Now, I've already done my best to interpret this uh, probably two years ago, and I didn't fully understand it then, but I understand it more now, but I want you to understand that my interpretation is basically the same as I already interpreted it. Go back and look through my older videos and see what I'm trying to understand with what the Spirit has delivered to me well over 20 years ago. I want you to know that I'm real. I'm really real. This is really all happening. I know it's really all happening. It's everything around me, in and out of me. Everything is manifesting to the fullness of uh, their uh, objective of perspective. What their objective of perspective is, is manifested in the fullness in my life and everything around it. And they know that. That's one of the reasons why I'm still here, breathing and walking and talking. And then it's not the primary reason, but it has everything to do with the way that the father is playing, um, in a sense, a massive movement of chess strategies in um, a spiritual war that has already been won a long time ago. But yet people are still going through the repercussional rebounds and echoes of these paces. And of course, the experiential gain of the default, uh, you know, or for those that have overcome the default um, is still relative. The experiential gain of that is still relative within this uh, repercussion of the echo that so many people are existing and living their lives out in, if you will. So uh, this goat head down here on this spacecraft is going to fulfill itself with uh, the masses of their initiates that are being duped and I'm going to call this the ethnicities as I've been saying. Notice it's USA, United States of America. America means full of race. At least to the best of my interpretation, uh, America means full of race. And then you go to Ellis Island, then you get L is, L is Island. Interesting with this island and how it correlates to what I just so happen to be building right now with this cherry island with these live edges. And then you get Tropic of Cancer, Tropics Cancer. I've been wondering if that is meaning something greater, and I think that it does, but nonetheless, uh, this, this USA, this ethnicity is getting duped by the us. So as I said, the perspective from their perspective is that they're the us, this would be the them. And then this them is doing all the dirty work, which represents the mass ethnicity within their initiatic lodges and mystery uh, institutions that have been taught and promised things that they're not going to get that they're turning these people into the asses holding that carrot before their face but in all reality now turning them into the rabbit that continually says what's up doc in essence now they're the ergo emergency room emergency room go ergo what's up doc and then of course now from their perspective they're giving somebody else the physician uh, that has erred in their going they're becoming the judges and jury in a multi uh mirrored house um that when jesus christ says go into the lost sheep of the house of israel well that's where we've gone into literally literally and who do you think is going to be able to keep their sanity in such a place like this well that's the firm believer in the truth of jesus christ that knows a loving father and can trust him through this house of mirrors to lead uh to lead us all to paradise, the paradise of truth without any bondage to sin, without any bondage to this impression that this ancient sin has imposed itself as some sort of falling stone upon our peaceful reality, uh, regardless of how you were taught to see it of the ancient past. You know what I mean? And then now everybody lives within the chaotic wave seeking to fulfill an ancient destiny. Well, that's when you're living in the past. You can't create the future by living in the past. Although that the future is the product of the past that becomes the mistake. Therefore, then you create the mistake as the future from the past. What you doing? What you doing? Now, you got to live in the future, which is the ever-present moment of the change beyond the past. But the change that you're trying to create is to bring the past back because you taught this ultimate past was the best way to be. It's not. It's the embryonic state that you're looking into. As the tree of Sephiroth would prove with my understanding as it being the viewpoint of the somatic cell broken down into a pure, simple 2D imagery of geometry, of lines and shapes, you know?
Somebody's getting duped here. Spirit knows the truth, trying to give me the best way to give it to you. And I know that they're trying to do their best to stop you guys from understanding it. But, uh, you know, it ain't going to happen because the very people that are listening to me are the very people that I'm supposed to be reaching at this moment. And then think about the people that I'm going to be able to reach when they fulfill their destiny of taking me. You know what I mean? I'm going to go into the very heart of this matter, if you will. Right now, I'm finding my way into its mind. All through the spirit of truth. So, yeah, something comes on Gotham City, as we can see. This very unique understanding of the one. This is where we're going to talk about the dance a little bit. And show you how the spirit started giving it to me. And I'm going to show you uh, what I see here. Notice that this is an inverted triangle. Right? Really, it's coming from a boat location. Right? And we've already seen that this boat location represents me. Um, there's me on a little skateboard ramp. Right? Me, the skateboarder. Uh, this is me as well uh, shining this light. And that's what this becomes. This light now is like a spotlight. And that this is the inspiration where the Batman symbol just kind of jumped on there because it's synonymous with that spotlight throughout Gotham City. But there's two spotlights. And then somebody even told me this. Who was it? Who was the first person that said this? Because I didn't understand this thing. Um, it was that dude that uses that creation geometry with the two eyes and says that reveals everything. Um, oh, man. I can't remember his name. But it makes the shape of an owl and all kinds of other stuff, right? All right, well, anyway, um, that guy is the one who said this makes the inverted womb, all right? The symbol for the sacred feminine. Now, notice it's the birthing out. We know it's the announcing the birth of the New World Order. So out of this womb location that we see is triggered by a destruction here at New York City, Gotham. Remember how I've been describing New York City as the, the womb, right? Right, the objective and essence of the 69 taking that bite out of, in reference now to cancer, in which I said, you know, you are what you eat. You're going to come down and eat can some cancer. Well, then guess what? You are the cancer. We've already shown that perspective, but these people are in the mirror. They're not looking for the solution to it. Uh, they're looking uh, for what these people are telling them higher above, which the solution to it. And actually, uh, it's bringing them into the destruction, not of the mirror, but the destruction of themselves, those that entertain it. And in more ways than one. Let's see who's out front right now. One second. Okay. All right. So there's a trinity of destruction here that takes place. All right. A trinity of destruction. If you ever put, in a sense, two mirrors face to face, what do you see? An almost infinity, a bottomless uh, pit, if you will. Right? An abysmal geometry of the same stagnant shape goes off into the distance of nowhere, if you will. But that's where the fracturing takes place from the double. And that's where you get multiple manifestations on different planes of echoing realities, but in essence are all still replicating the same original event. And this is where we can see the manifestation is going to bring itself out, at least in a trinity application in these end times, as an objective uh, of the highest of them to dupe the lowest of them. Because, of course, uh, not everybody is going to make it in that number, their number that they've set. And, of course, you know that Jesus Christ has left the door open to anyone and even these very enemies that seek to destroy us um, through this propaganda and uh, doctrine of mirrors so and he's even purchased the enemy at least from the seed of men uh, he's purchased the enemy with his very blood you know purchase the enemy and those were these people that have brought him to the cross and of course that have obtained their potter's field from those 30 pieces of silver if you will that brought him through his crucifixion through the uh, enticement of Judas to turn him in you know what I mean? Being not his brother's keeper, if you will. So, uh, multiple manifestations of destruction. So here comes the, something coming from the moon in, from two, two places. And then it's going to do these that are doing the dirty work right now. That are being in reference to some sort of spaceship or space station SS, if you will. And then of course this would be the ethnicities being turned into the goats. And then you should read about the goats as well as the lambs being brought to the slaughter in Isaiah 34. OK, 
okay, so, uh, how, what was I thinking here when I was doing this? I, I really don't know, but I want you to see uh, these pterodactyls here. Reptilians. Remember the Dan's, the reptilian stuff they keep pumping on everybody, which I told you is really just hiding the actuality of they themselves as being the reptilians through the opening of the third eye, which is in reference to the reptilian portion of the brain that comes from their perspective of institution that has named it that for themselves. See what I'm saying? It's their reality, their world, their repercussion. Get me? Get me? Okay. So, uh... So then here comes the hype now where they dupe the masses and even the lowest of the initiates that uh, really can't smell the coffee about these reptilian beings. And here they come. There's the reptilians, pterodactyls. Now what are these? These are the Dan's, the Midwayers. Watch this. Got a train coming, of course. It's going to be a slow train, probably by design. These are the Dan's. Now, I've talked about this before from how I was understanding it with the scripture, um, even how it relates to Joel 2, even John 10. And, of course, what we're going to look into in the book of Luke. But the seven here is the super key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And notice the simulation of flight coming up out of the womb. Now, this is this birthing thing that's taking place, right? It's this repercussion of a birth that's taken, in a sense, a manifestation of multiple fold uh, realities but are all taking place within the same reality simultaneously at the same moment. But we can see the symbolic representation of these realities as they're mounting up for this momentous uh, purging of itself, if you will, and birthing of itself at the same time. Uh, so as you see the reptilians, this would be what they have done to create. This is what the code is in the Fantastic 44 movie as it is fulfilled further and the gangs of new york movie in which they are going to create these flying aka alien uh giant yeah, symbolically uh connection with the reds and then this will be further fulfilled in a connection symbolically with lions and ancient uh scripture identification that will somehow in some way pair up with Esau somewhere connecting into an identity of Jesus Christ then we see a manifestation from my explanation will be that this fulfills itself as them being the cure from their perspective as that would be angelic angels in flight seven all of this scenario notice this next one up here now, what was I thinking when I drew that? I can tell you exactly what I was thinking when I drew that. Marijuana. That's a seven... Seven-leafed marijuana leaf. All right. Uh, it's obvious through my connection with reggae that from time to time, uh, I have smoked marijuana. Okay? I'm just being honest. And my point is with this honesty... Do I, do I think you need to, or do I, uh, am I preaching about it? No, I'm not. But does it fit into the perspective of something um, with chemtrails and inhalation and pollutants, and how does this um, herb um, for the healing of man come into play to blocking certain of these poisons? Yes, it does. And we'll talk about that. Because it relates to the Guardians of God whole movie with these metal flakes that are now going to relate to barium, strontium, and aluminum. But then it's a transversion of the effect of the Orion and the semblance of this DNA that's connected in relationship with the symbolism of a mouse. And we'll just have to keep talking because the Spirit's allowing me to see a whole bunch right now. As you can see, it's allowed me to see it from the very beginning. I'm going to talk about that too. I'm going to have to shorten this video because I noticed that Verizon is um, throttling um, uh, certain users um time or whatever 
gigabytes or whatever you want to call it. And of course, they're doing it in my channel, so it's taking a long time to upload the whole day. Uh, so they would see themselves as these uh, seven with the symbols of flight. Angels is how I began to translate this. But now I can see this in relationship where it does fulfill themselves. They create the bad ones. Now they want to see themselves as the good ones. But the ultimate dynamo is that it's not them. It now turns into the midwares. And then you're going to see uh, these mid barriers going up directly two places here and then boom here, right there, right there. Interesting. Multiple destructions. And of course, you know where they're coming from out of in reference. Now you have to understand the identity of the mid -wares, which are the true natives of what? Planet Earth. Got to read the Urantia book. This is what's going to fulfill the real identity of the army of Joel II of people like the which have never been seen. And this is why Israel, a.k.a. Little Men on the Moon, and of course those that follow after them, don't really understand the fullness thereof. They've been leaning upon their own understanding. This crutch is about to be yanked out from under them. And of course, Jack and Jill go up that hill. They fail. They fail. My friends, uh, my point is... I'm. I'm absolutely real. Uh, justice for Jenny. You know what I mean? Sacking the red, right? Right. And then using mirrors to flip switch and tip top and flip flop everything in between. It ain't working. It ain't working. I'm not perfect, but the spirit that works through me is. And I have to have patience and uh, be still and know. And I'm learning more and more how to do that. When I do that, uh, it happens. It happens. Um, the magnitude of what's happening is so great. Of course, uh, uh, giving it all and retaining it all and maintaining it all in proper order and sequence is very difficult for my mortal self to do. But nonetheless, uh, uh, you know, many be called, but few are chosen. And that's, that's where I'm at right now, you know what I mean? That's where I'm at right now. I don't see in me... Um, obviously what the father sees in me but that's got to be the beauty of it right so obviously the father sees something in me and I'm you know I'm happy to be a part of that I'm happy to be a part of that so if you can if anybody's out there uh, with the entertainment industry that's connected with the Beyonce and the Jay Z's and the Will Smith's and all the other ethnicities too and then even uh, even the white folks that are in the entertainment biz they're being duped too look at all them people that are clutching over their right eye you know what i mean and then these are the people that get left these are the people that cause destruction these people get destruction at least as it's being pinned the correct tail on the equational donkey but of course the correct tail on the equational donkey has three manifestations at least that are imperative to understanding within this perspective see israel where are we at with her Israel is the irony, and it's this Israel that is not a Jew that yet says itself is a Jew by ideology. Um, it's caught between a rock and a hard place. That's what these pillars represent. You know what I mean? The rock and the hard place, the iron and then the rock, and then the stone, man of stone, Ephraim. Then I said Ephraim represents dude, looks like a lady. That's the Joshin Callum. Then we know that the black is the iron, the Boaz, the left. So that's a rock and a hard place. Then they're telling you to stay centered. But the center that you're in is the place directly between the rock and the hard place. Destruction and annihilation with you. That's not the truth of the center. That's the original center, not the original center. You know what I mean? The rock in the hard place. Boaz, Jashin. You know what I mean? Jashin's the dude that looks like a lady. Why is he the rock? Because it's the needle in the haystack. Who's the haystack? That's the blonde women. The needle ret is the what? Obelisk. Right? I keep pulling it down because the number is here. I can't see him. On the screen. You, it's real, people. Don't turn it away from your mind. You're the people I'm talking to. And I'm not talking to code because they've taken me away from everybody else. Who else want to be talking to? I'm talking to you guys, the club. 
it's being taught in so many ways that they're not divergent, but yet they are divergent. But of course, you got to realize they're doping you. You got to be taught that. Um, when I when I wrote up here with this plane where it says Asin Incredible in reverse, it says Nisa. Ass, are we not talking about, been talking about donkeys and they're trying to get a particular ass in? But then think about how people are getting duped when they tell you you're getting effed up the ass. You know, pardon the French. <laughs> but it all relates. Somebody's getting duped. Somebody's getting effed up the ass, man. The ass in is representing this individual here to come through the sacred, sacred feminine. Which I told you has been an abomination the whole time. You guys ain't seeing the real dude that looks like a lady. That is beyond this jack that becomes the fullness of the jack rabbit. You know? The hooded one. The one, the secret one. The one that's a representation and a culmination of the fulfillment of this one with 50 names. That would link back up through Marduk's and Yahweh's. Anger, wrath, and vengeance. Death and destruction. Apollyon, the destroyer. The serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness. That becomes this, in essence, their light. And then now that becomes their candle put on the candlestick. The candlestick would have to be in representation of Moses becomes the mortal body that is now wielding this light as its truth, which is going to be imperative to understanding Revelation chapter 11 with these two witnesses that can fulfill the real witnessing takes place in fulfillment of the place of ultimate destruction on the moon location itself. And then this will fulfill further the scenario with the divide and conquer from their perspective. And then, of course, even from my perspective, as the spirit has given me the understanding to see it with the relationship of the two hemispheres of the brain, as now they have ever begun and continue to correlate with the division of these two eyes, one darkened right, the other darkened left. But that, of course, becomes from their duality and their flip-flopping of history, which now relates the synthesis of the ultimate identity of them being simultaneously the workers of good and evil on this world ever and anon. You know what I mean? And then they call themselves anonymous, anon. <laughs> you know, anon never forgets, right? Well, thank thankfully for you that the Father both forgives and forgets. Thankfully for you. Praises unto him. Maybe you'll learn that one day. You know? Thankfully for you. So, uh, let's get on down here to Luke and get you guys to check out some stuff with the Midwares, which begins to will further fulfill this daggone verses of uh, Luke chapter 11, of course. Uh, Luke chapter 11. Remember, we're talking about the mirror. Did you know that the loyal Midwares number 1,111 members? In other words, 1, 1, 1, 1, 11, 11. That's right. They sure do. Mm -hmm. And then everybody started seeing this 11, 11 thing. And then we're talking about Amir. But then we're talking about, even in reference to what I have to talk about as we talk about the mirror, and then go into their house of mirrors. And then in a sense, decode it and reveal the realness of it to them. But those that are still trapped into it, saying that they're not a part of it. And all I everything that says they are a part of it. And then, of course, they're being set up for their own destruction, in essence, with this connection with the rabbits. And then, of course, you know that I was visited by a rabbit a very long time ago when I was about five years old. Interesting enough, number five comes into play. That's not. Uh, but yet I was visited by a rabbit. Who do I think was the rabbit that visited me? Uh, well, I think it was a midwayer as was the wolf that visited me. Do I think that they were evil manifestations? No, nope. but I think that they were manifestations appearing to me in symbolic fashion to prepare my mind for the revelation of the truths that I've received as you see manifest fully in my life right now. Midwares. Of course, they can change form, shape shifters. You gotta realize a great portion of the Midwares rebelled. That's where Beelzebub became the leader, which Jesus Christ is talking about in the book of Luke which is going to be right here. Ah, Israel's got their ears wide open. So there's your Beelzebub right there. Okay, boom. All right. So Jesus starts saying, 
And if I by Beelzebub, that's what they're confuse, confusing and accusing him of. If I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. Now when he says, therefore shall they be your judges, I, in the vision, have I've been given. And then line upon line, precept upon precept, understand the connection to Dan, as you have heard me voice, and then the scriptures that are comparative to it. But now I understand that it's the fullness of the representation of midwares, primary and secondary, that one portion evolves from the Anunnaki heritage, meaning a portion of secondary midwares was birthed by a particular spiritual and material li liaison between two individuals that came together in a union that was not typically sexual. And then these quasi-spiritual material beings were born from them. But of course, there is a primary order of these midwares that are not born from them. Jesus Christ is basically saying that it will be the midwares themselves, they, which Beelzebub is of, the midware faction, the rebellious faction. And then Jesus Christ says that these midwares shall be your judges. Incredible. Now that would have to be so incredible because then it can now guarantee the identity of the existence of these contained individuals that you see being released from a birthing womb situation, which is now paired up with an ass in. And then this would fulfill the scripture where Jesus Christ talks about loosing a ass uh, on this Sabbath day, the last day, which becomes the seventh day. And then of course the ass has to be seen from so many perspectives of hyperburials, variables of which they themselves have mistranslated. And then have put themselves as the chief and primary objective of that fulfillment of that scripture, which by default of the mirror makes them look like the ass themselves. Lean in, not upon your own understanding, Israel. You are effing up big time. You're being effed in the ass by the people that you have turned to to unravel these mysteries, which in all reality are not even a mystery to the spirit of truth when you follow the lead of perfection and not when you believe yourself to be thou perfect already. So, my friends, my friends, you would have to now understand who these midwares are and understand this connection with who these Dans are, and then everything will begin to work out. And it will further fulfill the understanding of how the vision that I've been given begins to fulfill its manifestation even more and more becomes realized of it. And I need you guys to understand that. I need you guys to understand that I've been prepared for this and I have struggled um, as I've gone through it. There's no doubt. Of course I was. And my imperfection is validated by his perfection. Of course, this is his plan, not mine. Everything around me, as you guys look into, is fully, supposedly the code of your objective, which now makes what has put that as the um, objective in essence of my revelation from my perspective to you now becomes the objective of your center and which now by default is Jesus Christ the truth of all things you're learning it you're seeing um, that you are in the house of mirrors you are seeing the double but no longer are you now seeing the double only from the bastardized version of the acceptance of the reversal of what the truth is as the truth and then therefore you spew the lie to defend it I'll be back <laughs>